the question I'm asking here is um, find the average compressive stress in the 12 by 12 diagonal member okay so obviously the first thing you need to do is uh, find the know which one we're talking about here okay so the eight I'm sorry the 8 by 8 diagonal member so the 8 by 8 diagonal member is this guy up here we're going to start with this one okay it's eight inch by eight inch so the first thing we need what are we trying to do we're trying to find the average compressive stress okay so let's let's just look at it we have this member coming down and let's just kind of draw it like this okay it's actually square and it has a compressive force of 20 kips so there's 20 kips in compression on this thing we know the stress sigma or f is equal to p over a okay so we need the area now what area well we're looking at cutting it across like this so the area would be this cross-sectional area right here. Now, if you look at an 8 by 8, this is, the, this is nominally 8 by 8. Just like a 2 by 4 isn't really 2 inches by 4 inches, an 8 by 8 isn't really 8 inches by 8 inches. So the actual stress, we need to calculate it based on the actual size. The actual dimension of an 8 by 8 is actually, what do you think? Anyone work with lumber? Seven and a half by seven and a half, as was Gregory's telling us. That's right. So when we do the calculation, we have to make sure we get that in there. So we get 20 kips divided by 7.5 inches by 7.5 inches. We do the math, we get 0 0.3556 now units are super important here what are the units on this thing the units are kips per inch squared if i want to see that in pounds per square inch because sometimes that's a a unit we use we just move the decimal over three or 355.6 pounds per inch squared psi okay so what does that mean well when we get into our next unit on materials we would then use that information to compare it to the actual um the, the capacity of wood so what do you think what do you think of wood capacity is do you think 355 is a lot or a little bit for wood um i did a, I, I looked this up and i have a table here and let's just look at strengths of wood and again this is kind of a uh preview of what we're going to look at next week but let's just take ponderosa pine real common around here okay ponderosa pine these are material properties and it turns out we're looking at the compressive strength in psi 5320 psi so just looking at this we know that um, this is this is not going to fail the wood but why do you think it's so low i mean that's less than 10 percent of its capacity 355 versus 5000 so why do you think that that's so low anyone have an idea think about it a little bit so we're, our, our factor of safety is um, is is pretty is pretty high here. We have 355 psi versus capacity of 5320 psi. So Sean's saying maybe there's more forces realistically. So sure, there could be some extra things going on. You might not have done a good job of estimating the forces. It might not be pure simple compressive stress any other ideas thoughts of why uh, this member it's in compression so it's basically acting like a column 
might not be up to its full strength in a in that that's allowable for this would be for ponderosa what happens if we take something take something kind of like this okay and we put a force on it and we're going to have another unit after materials on columns if we put a force on something that looks like this how do you think that's going to fail you think I mean, you take take something like a a straw, and and push on it. Do you think the material is going to just crush, or you think something else might happen? What do you think might happen? Well, it turns out that when you have things that are tall and slender, um, that Sean's throwing, it could fall to the side or it could crush. So this number up here, showing the actual stress versus the uh, the capacity tells us whether or not it crushes it's much lower so it's not going to crush but something tall and slender may buckle okay or fall to the side as Sean said in the chat and so this buckling is a failure mechanism so what we're going to find is typically members that are under compression could fail that way we had that at the very beginning of the semester when we looked at the trusses so you'll see here we have in this in this uh, in this end of a truss here the big heavy members tend to be under compression because they could buckle but then we've got these rods here which would be under tension because they can't buckle they can be nice and slender this top one would be under compression these guys will be under tension primarily because they have to support the the bridge deck okay so that is one reason why um, we would have such a low stress. So that's the first question. And our answer here was uh, 355.6 PSI. 